Welcome to another episode of Our Two Cents. Hope you guys had a great couple of days. And as you know, Sharon and myself really want Our Two Cents channel to be an incredibly wholesome source of content for all of our fam, our OTC fam, and for new viewers such as yourself. So remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. So today it's all about health again, and actually a topic that you may have noticed popping up on news um, from all over the world, and that's cholera. Um, and I have charge nurse Rose and Googie of the Nairobi Hospital to explain a little bit more about cholera to us because, you know, a lot of people just hear the word cholera and they, they know it's dangerous, people die, um, you can get really sick from it, but they're not really familiar with exactly what it is. So, Rose, welcome. Thank you. Yes, uh, cholera is a problem we have, mm -hmm. and uh, the, it's a bacteria infection that normally will infect your stomach or the, okay. the, in the intestine, and anyone, and I mean anyone, can get it. Anyone? Yes. So it's, it's not, um, not necessarily if someone is malnourished or, you know, it, it can happen to anybody. It can happen to anybody with good health. Mm. The only problem is that if you have other problems, it will take you down faster. Oh, but yeah. anyone can actually get cholera. And how does one get cholera? Cholera is one of the easiest diseases to get because you get it from what you eat. Okay. Normally, it's, you get it from eating contaminated or drinking contaminated water. water. And this water has to be contaminated with uh, feces that has come from somebody who has cholera mm. or from a source where cholera is. Mm -hmm. That is how you end up getting the disease yourself. Okay. Yes. And are there certain food sources that are more easily contamin contaminated than others? It is uh, depending on where you get your food. If you are getting your food from a source that is probably by the roadside, that's where it's being sold, it's likely to be more contaminated. However, remember at the end of the day, the food could come home when it is well, but as you handle it, mm. you contaminate it. Either you contaminate it as you feed yourself or as you serve others. Wow, okay, so the whole process, really, you need to take care. Um, so what kind of symptoms does cholera, you know, kind of, like how, how does it manifest? How do I know if I have cholera? If you eat something that is contaminated with cholera or drink water or juices mm. that are contaminated, the symptom that you start getting first, you get, you start feeling your abdomen is full, your stomach is so full of gas. Oh. And you start wondering where did I eat beans or what is happening? Don't blame those beans! <laughs> so that is again followed by diarrhea. Okay. So bloating and then diarrhea. The onset of time from the time you ate and the time you start having symptoms is ranges from any time from five hours to five days. Wow, five hours to five days. Yes. That's a lot of time to be watching out for cholera. Yes, you have got <laughs> to. The only good thing is that if you recognize it early and mm -hmm. you seek treatment early, then it is easy to treat. The mm. other symptom you get, you may have to, you may form it, mm -hmm. but form it is not always there. Mainstay of the symptom is abdominal uh, fullness followed by abdominal uh, gas. Mm -hmm. Then you get the diarrhea, diarrhea, and that will be followed with abdominal claps. Very like so pain. Is feel pain now yeah, on the abdomen, and okay. the diarrhea has characteristic that will tell oh. you that it's cholera. Okay, so what type of poo should you be pooing if you have cholera? <laughs> if you have cholera, <laughs> you just, uh, uh, if you have diarrhea, maybe to start the first diarrhea it will be just a loose stool, but with time mm. it becomes watery. Okay, Sometimes watery. you used to call it rice water because it has rice a, water. a characteristic of that milky nature. But uh, that comes from the nutrients, the elements, mm. the salts that th the body is losing. That's what gives that characteristic. And then it's effortless. 
Effortless means you do not have to make any effort for the diarrhea to come out. It just flows. If you are seated here before you reach the toilet, it's already out. So how can one prevent cholera? I mean, you, you spoke about the food contamination and things like that, but what should we do like from when we buy the food, when we prepare it at home? What are some tips that you can provide our viewers? I think the number one thing is first watch where do I eat from. Mm. Because as I said, there are some areas that when you go to eat, you are likely to get contaminated food. Number two, also remember whatever you eat, make sure you have washed your hands. Hand washing is the main state. But that's not just with water, it's with soap, right? It has to be soap and water. Mm. And uh, every time, remember you are, have no control over my hands, mm. but you have control over your hands. Mm -hmm. So if you get used to getting washing your hands, doesn't matter what I carry in my hands, even if I take your hands and give you the bath, mm -hmm. wash your hands. And uh, then remember, if the food is here and you just are about to eat it, then don't shake people's heart in the process yes. of eating. Because if you do that, you are likely to contaminate yourself. The yes. other thing that you need to do, apart from the food that you can contaminate, remember even water mm. is an issue. You need to boil your water that you drink or source water that you know has properly been purified. And that goes even when if it is water for brushing your teeth, uh -huh. which many of us just go to the tap and... Yes, I, yes. I used tap water to just brush my teeth and maybe I should start boiling that water It as should well. be boiled, particularly when you hear there is cholera, maybe you right. are in an area that mm. you can hear people are talking, there is cholera, there is cholera. The good thing is wash your hands, boil your water. And again, when you boil that water, you have to leave it cool. So make sure it is covered as it could, otherwise it will get contaminated. And how long do you have to leave the kettle boiling? Uh, at least no water will boil if it has increased added degrees. Yes. And therefore if you just allow it to boil for at least five minutes, okay. then you are safe to say that this water Everything is, is killed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Again, remember the food can easily get contaminated, could be cooked well and the bacteria would have died. But if I come and serve myself and I contaminate the food, then leave it there it is going to allow the bacteria to continue growing mm. so that the people who feed after me then they'll be eating contaminated food so key thing is make sure that your food when it is cooling it is covered and then when you store it in the fridge it's also important to remember keep the cooked food separate from raw food for example you have one fridge with the vegetables which yes. are and you have cooked leftovers, they have to be separated. Yes. Or maybe yeah. you have raw beef, exactly. minced meat waiting to be cooked. Exactly, they have to be separated. Mm. If you are going to do salads, again remember salads are going to be easier to transmit cholera than any other cooked food. So for vegetable salad, fruit salad, make sure you have washed your fruits and they are thoroughly uh, sanitized. Mm. You, there are chemicals in the supermarket that you see yes. this a salad wash can disinfect. You mix it with this. water yes. and then you dip your vegetables exactly. in Exactly. Mm. If you are eating out, avoid those if. You are taking a risk. Yes. You'd rather go off with a banana, mm. which you peel. Yes, yes. You eat it mm. don't instead of what has been cut by somebody else that's true but if you do it yourself make it clear you follow the precaution to sanitize them before you prepare them okay yes um and you know let's just keep this video hopeful uh like you said before when you do have cholera if found early it is treatable it's very very easy to treat but uh, you need, when you start having those diarrhea, the first, the second, by the time you're having the third one, go to the hospital. The third one was effortless. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I don't know why it's funny, but I'm just like imagining. But yeah, that's, that's really crazy, guys. Go way before. Yes. So that uh, then we need to give you fluid because you are mm. using fluid. So the mainstay is you give fluid. You give fluid. So is that one of the main reasons why people suffer and, and potentially pass on because of the, the dehydration? Exactly. It's the mm. dehydration that kills. If you have the ORS, this is all dehydration. So you'll find you, you are able to get it in mm. many chemistries, chemists, sorry, and then you 
mix that solution as it is directed there and you go drinking. As you go to hospital, carry that water. Carry that ORS. If you don't have ORS, just take plain water. Drink as much, much as, as you, you can. can. And then after you reach the hospital, of course, we'll be able to put the lines and give you the free fire mm. uh, infusion. Yes. But I tell you the truth, those who are able to drink, recover faster because it is from the stomach that we are losing the fluid. I think that's yeah. the, the main thing, the main takeaway. Regardless if you have cholera or not, even just regular diarrhea, you have like loose stool, a bad tummy or anything like that, make sure you, you rehydrate. Yes as much as possible because that's that's really the biggest problem um but yeah anything else you'd like to add maybe things to add uh, in, i've said you can have the ors mm. if it is not available mm. you can make one at home oh you, we like diy you boil <laughs> you boil the water make sure it has boiled for at least the five minutes yes and then for about a liter you put one teaspoon of sugar and okay. uh, one teaspoon of salt one teaspoon of sugar and one teaspoon of salt to one and, liter of water. Yes, and you keep drinking that. It mm. will help to replace what you are losing from your body. Amazing. Yeah. That's a, that's one of the greatest DIYs I've ever heard. Um, but but uh, Rose, the does the sugar matter? Does it have to be brown sugar or it doesn't matter? White sugar? Whatever sugar you have you're using, use it. I'm going to put the recipe down in the description so you guys can do a DIY ORS at home and you can use it even if you just have regular diarrhea. Yeah. Then uh, maybe just to remember, for you to keep away from cholera, mm. remember whatever it is, wash your hands and wash your hands. Then if you are going to eat, you have to cook the food, mm -hmm. you boil it, you peel it or you leave it. Mm, that's like a saying. Yeah. You cook it, you boil, boil it, it, you peel, peel it, it, or leave you it. leave it. Yes. Leave it as in don't touch. Thank you, Rose. I think we've learned so much. Um, and of course, this is charge nurse Rose and Googie from the Nairobi Hospital. And thank you so much for coming by to share your knowledge with us and practical information, guys. Now you have a DIY recipe to how to like rehydrate yourself when you got a little bit of a loose stool. Anyways, Sharon, of course, sends her love and she'll be seeing you very shortly. But if you guys have any other comments or suggestions that you would like to give us, let us know comment below thumbs up to this video so we know you like this and subscribe to our channel and until next time bye guys <laughs> I really, yeah she did it she did it check out our two cents playlist for more videos and don't forget to subscribe